Almost 3 million people depend on healthy reefs for food, economic prosperity, and coastal protection. But reef health has declined over the last five years, threatening the very foundation of these benefits. The Healthy Reefs Initiative, a partnership of over 70 organizations, works together to better understand and improve reef health, ensuring we all can thrive. This 2022 report card presents the state of our reef using data from 234 sites. We evaluate reef health by ranking four key indicators, commercial fish, herbivorous fish, fleshy macroalgae, and living coral into grades from one to five or conditions from critical to very good. We then combine these four indicators into the reef health index. This year's regional score is 2.3 out of five, indicating poor reef health. This marks the second decline since our region's best score from 2018. Across the 234 sites, there is only one site in very good condition, compared to four in 2020. The number of good sites is down to 5%, compared to 8% in the last report. Critical sites almost doubled from 16% in 2020 to 31% in 2022. Individually, fleshy macroalgae, herbivorous fish biomass, and commercial fish biomass are all in poor status. Live coral cover is the only indicator in fair condition and has remained the same over the last five years. Still, diseases and more frequent bleaching events are influencing changes in the coral populations. We now have fewer of the larger reef-building species like boulder, brain, and branching corals that provide the structural foundation of our reef. We've seen regional declines in commercial fish with three of four countries now ranked as critical. Belize had the largest decline. Regionally, over 75% of snappers and groupers were too small to even reproduce. Our data show these larger fish, required to replenish any population, are primarily found in fully protected zones. Since 2008, every report card has called for increasing fully protected zones within marine protected areas to 20%. In 2020, Guatemala increased its area under full protection to 12%. That's now the highest in the MAR. Belize had the lowest percent in full protection, only 1.5% as of March 2020. But new recent commitments as part of the historic blue bond, which absorbs the national debt, should increase this number. Our data show that even highly protected areas do not protect fish populations. Only full protection, meaning no fishing, actually results in increased fish biomass. Unfortunately, these areas cover only 2.4% of the territorial sea in the MAR. The MAR has been a global leader in protecting an increasing numbers of parrot fish which graze harmful algae. However, we've seen declines regionally, especially in Belize, as the region is in need of greater enforcement. Too much fleshy macroalgae persists, which indicates poor condition overall and is in critical condition in Honduras and Guatemala, which had a 58% increase since the last report card. To further reduce algae and create a restorative mariculture opportunity, we are developing, with our partners from Fisheries in Mexico and TASA in Belize, a Caribbean king crab mariculture process that could be widely replicated. But this is only part of the solution. We still need to urgently address the sources of nutrient pollution that fuel macroalgae and can cause diseases in both corals and humans. In Roatan, Honduras, dedicated efforts over the last 10 years have resulted in improved reef health and water quality. The new stony coral tissue loss disease now ravages corals in over 50% of the Mesoamerican reef. We know the threats, we have discussed them in detail and developed a plethora of plans to address them over the last 30 years. But most of these plans have not been fully implemented or enforced. We are now experiencing dramatic declines in reef health. We should have done these things 15 years ago. Every year of further delay means that recovery will take longer and be less effective. We need to act now or forever lose our Mesoamerican reef.